Today, we will try to understand roots of Hitler's evil in time when Central Europe was integrated in a multicultural empire ruled by Habsburgs. Although the empire got dissolved, Hitler still hated Habsburgs. At 5.30 on the evening of 14th March 1938, Adolf Hitler's Mercedes-Benz limousine slowly drove past Schönbrunn Palace and towards the Hotel Imperial in the heart of Vienna. His greatest dream since childhood was to unite Austria with Germany and to destroy everything Habsburg Empire represented to him. Before we continue, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons not to miss future videos on this channel where we will discuss history of monarchies as well as current state of monarchism. I look forward to the comments and discussions and hope we will create a community where we discuss monarchism. Now back to 1938. On March of 1938, Adolf Hitler succeeded the first half, reunification. The second half was to come, the destruction of multiculturalism fueled by his racist worldviews. This would result in killing of millions and destruction of much of Europe. Hitler could have stayed in any of Vienna's palaces, but he deliberately chose Hotel Imperial. Two decades earlier, when he was a failed art student, he was shoveling snow in front of that very hotel. On that night, Hotel hosted the reception honoring Habsburg heir to the throne, Archduke Karl. Hitler wrote about that night. I could have seen the glittering lights and chandeliers in the lobby, but I knew it was impossible for me to set foot inside. I resolved that night that someday I would come back to Imperial Hotel and walk over the red carpet in that glittering interior where the Habsburgs danced. I don't know how or when, but I waited for this day and tonight I am here. Now, all of his hatred was focused on Habsburgs. However, the old emperor was long dead. Archduke Franz Ferdinand as well, so he turned his attention to Franz Ferdinand's children. Within hours of his return to Austria, Maximilian, Franz Ferdinand's son, would go from being the human face of the state to being called an enemy of the state and be sent into Nazi prison. The route for Hitler's hate against the Habsburg Empire, the dead Archduke and his children, were planted much earlier. Alois Hitler, Adolf's father, was a supporter of Habsburg dynasty and worshipped the old Emperor Franz Josef. To him, Habsburg represented stability and permanence. These values of Alois were rejected by Adolf. In fact, as a schoolboy, Adolf found a kindred spirit in his high school teacher, Dr. Putsch, an obscure and petty German nationalist who mocked Habsburgs and multinational empire. However, his words made an impression on young Hitler, who said, It was then that I became a little revolutionary. And speaking of both revolutionaries and reformers, they all thought that nothing will change as long as the emperor was alive. And while Emperor Franz Josef thought that his successor, Franz Ferdinand, could not prevent revolution, Hitler thought that Franz Ferdinand will lead the revolution, but the one that he needs to stop. The revolution in which ethnic minorities will have equal rights and the society will be open to immigrants. Things that unsuccessful person like Hitler couldn't bear. He thought that Habsburgs were selling out German Austria to what he thought ethnic inferiors. Franz Ferdinand in Hitler's eyes was a traitor who didn't marry a German princess, but a Slavic, Czech countess, a subhuman Trojan horse from the empire's largest ethnic minority. Reinforcing Hitler's mistrust, the Archduke preferred living in Prague and not Vienna. To Hitler, Habsburgs had to be stopped. What Hitler did not understand is that for six centuries, the Habsburgs expanded their empire not by wars, but with marriages. The result was an empire with 12 distinct nationalities, hundreds of ethnic groups, countless traditions and religions, and over 50 million people ruled by Franz Josef. No empire on earth was more diverse than that. 
Hitler despised open borders of Austro-Hungarian Empire. Immigrants, mixing of people, languages and culture were a cancer, stealing his future. Archduke was one of the few royals to travel to America. He saw the ethnic diversity there as a strength, studied and recognized the genius behind the United States federal system of government. In the speech he planned to give when assessing to throne, he wrote, We desire to treat with equal love all the people of monarchy, all classes and all officially recognized religious faiths. High or low, poor or rich, all shall be held in the same before the throne. Just as all the people under our scepter shall have equal rights of participation in the common affairs of the monarchy, equally requires that each of them be guaranteed its national development within the framework of the monarchy's common interest, and all nationalities, all classes, all occupations shall, where it's not yet done, be enabled by just electoral laws to protect their interests. Adolf Hitler's years in Vienna convinced him a race war was not only inevitable but cleansing and desirable. To Hitler, the sooner the war came, the better. Only when Austria was destroyed, Germany will achieve its full greatness. When he learned of assassination of Archduke in Sarajevo, he fell on his knees and wept of happiness. The war came one month later and took countless lives and in process destroyed German, Austro-Hungarian, Russian and Ottoman empires. The newly formed dictatorships in Europe, ran by the people who hated deposed monarchs, fascists, national socialists and communists, were not thinking of building safety for their citizens, but were arming for the next great war that saw even more destruction. Consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons not to miss future videos on this channel where we discuss history of the monarchies as well as current state of monarchism. See you in the next one.